Welcome to today's webinar on pre-sort and post-pre-sort software and why you need both to optimize your mailings. My name is Wallace Vingles. I'm Vice President here at Window Book. Let's take a look at how we're going to spend the next hour together. As uh, I brought up earlier in the, just in the title itself, we're going to talk about the two essential types of software you need to survive and thrive in today's mailing world, pre-sort software and post-pre-sort software. We're going to take a look at how they differ from each other and then how they can work together and then, of course, why you need both to be successful. In taking a look at what really is pre-sort software, uh, you know, we define it kind of beyond what, what you would uh, pr traditionally perceive or think of as pre-sort software. Uh, depending on which vendor you currently use, you may think pre-sort software and, and what pops to mind is, uh, say, Mailstream Plus or Mail Manager or Max Pre-sort. Uh, again, uh, bulk mailer, depending again on the vendor. But the way we look at pre-sort software is we look at it the whole set of solutions that come before that actual pre-sort step. We're talking address verification, address hygiene, mailing list management, and then mail sortation, which is the actual pre-sort step. So when you talk address hygiene, there's three things you, you want to make sure that you achieve. You want to hit the three C's of, of address hygiene. You want to get a complete, a correct, and a current address. You want to use uh, USPS CAS certified software to make sure the addresses are complete and correct. And that CAS certified software, what it does first is it takes your input address and it validates it against a range of possibilities that are presented to it in the Postal Service Zip Plus 4 database. For instance, if your input address is 123 Main Street, it's in this first step going to compare and see, OK, I've got a range, a valid range of addresses, uh, 100 through 200 Main Street. This step says, I have a valid address. Moving into the next step where you uh, bump that address then against the Postal Service DPV file, uh, that's going to validate whether that delivery point is an actual deliverable address. It's going to go right down to 123 Main Street and say, is this deliverable or not? Uh, the next step would be to run it against the LaxLink database. Now, LAX stands for Locatable Address Conversion System. And where this came from was back in the... So back in the early 80s, when a lot of local governments and municipalities started converting rural route street address types, I mean, excuse me, rural route address types to street address types, because when, they, when these governments started implementing E911 systems, uh, it was very hard to dispatch first responders to uh, rural route 10 box 4. It was just too difficult to, to get... Uh, equipment and personnel dispatched to a, a, a vague address like that. So they started converting all those to uh, street address types like Main Street, uh, 456 Elm Street, etc. The Postal Service looked at that data and said, hey, that'd be a great thing to offer to our mailers so people can convert their, uh, you know, the mail as well, the addresses on their mail. So ever since that time, they've been building this database and it just keeps building and building and building. And now it's a required portion of uh, your address hygiene step. Uh, the last thing, and this was um, became required back in August of last year with CAS cycle N, was SweetLink. It was a step where you, you're then gonna you're gonna take address records that are um, that have business addresses. And you're gonna bump them against the uh, company database from the Postal Service to see if you can either correct or append the secondary address information for those input records. The next step is to make sure you get a current address. And to do that, you have to use one of the authorized move update methods. Now, there are several different kinds. We consider um, a couple to be pre-mailing or proactive methods. There are a couple that are post-mailing or reactive methods. And then there are a couple of different alternative methods that are described in some of the documentation from the Postal Service when they talk about move update. So when you look at the 